Good morning, everybody. Madam Deputy Secretary General, Mr. President, Ministers, Ambassadors, it's a pleasure to be here. So we are living during the most extraordinary time ever in human history. The only time more exciting than today is tomorrow. And it's a pleasure that I have to work with uh, two amazing organizations, both the XPRIZE Foundation and Singularity University, that thinks constantly about the change and how exponential technologies can be used. What I want to open up with is a realization that we are living with a significant disadvantage, and that's the way that our brains work. See, as we evolved on the savannas of Africa hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago, back then the world was best described as local and linear. Anything that affected you was within a day's walk. The world didn't change millennium to millennium or century to century. Things for your great-grandparents, you, your kids, their kids, was the same. And the way that our brain evolved, the way that our hundred billion neurons, our hundred trillion synaptic connections evolved, was for a world like that. But today the world is very different. Today the world is global and exponential. Something happens on the other side of the planet, you know about it seconds later. Your computers know about it microseconds later. Things aren't changing century to century or decade to decade. They are changing year to year. And if I were to graph it, it looks like this. That red line here is all of us. It's our citizens, it's our politicians, it's our children, it's our employees. We haven't had a hardware or a software upgrade in two million years. It's been a while. But this yellow line here is the technology that we are using and we are creating. It's computers, sensors, networks, artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, augmented and virtual reality. These things are exploding and doubling in power every 12 to 24 months. And the difference between these two things is either disruptive stress or disruptive opportunity, depending on your point of view. I opened my last book, Bold, with the story of Kodak. And when you think about Kodak growing up, it was the centerpiece of every vacation around the world. In 1996, at the height of this company's status, $28 billion market capitalization, 140,000 employees. Most people don't know that 20 years earlier, in 1976, Kodak had invented the digital camera in their labs. But they didn't understand the power of exponential growth. And so the leadership of that company, and you can think of it as the leadership of a nation, ignored those technologies. And in 2012, Kodak goes bankrupt, put out of business by the very technologies that they had created. In the same year of 2012, another company called Instagram, which understood the power of digital photography, goes and gets acquired by Facebook for a billion dollars. But they have 13 employees. And so this moment in time where linear thinking companies are getting displaced by exponential technologies is among us, it's upon us. And you can see this physical manifestation as these, you know, the film photography falls off a cliff. We're going to see this again with cars, as autonomous cars come on the road. We're going to see this in every single field where technologies don't change gracefully, they change disruptively. So this concept of exponentials, of exponential technology, what is exponentials? What does it feel like? This is a photograph of Singularity University up in Silicon Valley. All of us think in a linear fashion. My wife and I have two six-year-old boys, and they are great at counting linearly. In 30 linear steps, one, two, three, four, five. In 30 steps, they're 30 meters away. And that's the way our brains work. We think in linear terms, but in this exponential world, things aren't changing linearly, they're changing exponentially. And in 30 exponential steps, 30 simple doublings, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, we're not 30 meters away, we are a billion meters away. So in 30 exponential steps, we have effectively circumnavigated the globe 26 times. And it's a difference between linear thinking and exponential thinking that we're here to talk about today. It's the fundamental basis 
for the innovation. Now, you can think of this exponential growth we're, we're enjoying and experiencing today as a result of what's called Moore's Law, and this is Gordon Moore, one of the founders of Intel. In 1958, when Intel was founded, Gordon Moore and his partners began putting transistors onto silicon to make these integrated circuits. And in 1965, a few years later, they published an article, and Gordon Moore said, listen, we've noticed something. The number of integrated circuits, number of transistors on a piece of silicon has roughly been doubling every 12 to 24 months, and it's likely to continue. Well, this doubling per dollar, if you would, has continued for 50 years. And in some ways, in some dimensions, it's not slowing down, it's accelerating. So I want to give you a visualization of what this looks like. This is the first integrated circuit. You can see a horizontal and a vertical transistor there. Let's fast forward to Intel's first commercial product, the Intel 4004. Here we see 2,300 transistors at about a dollar apiece. Fast forward for 45 years now, so last year in 2016, here is an Intel Core i7 processor with 14.4 billion transistors less than a millionth of a penny each. My mom used to say that the world was getting faster. I'd say, Mom, come on, it's not getting faster, but this is why it is getting faster, right? We're seeing here a 330 billion fold price performance increase. When you say that we can do much more in every minute of our day, this is why. Let me give you another visualization of what this kind of amazing exponential growth looks like. This, in 1956, was a hard drive for five megabytes. If you happen to have your cargo airplane, you could move it from location to location, $120,000. This, fast forward now to 128 megabytes, 25 times more memory, 1,000 times cheaper. We noticed this change, but did we notice this? When nine years later, now it's 128 gigabytes for $99. And I'm involved in a nanotech company that's focused on increasing this memory density billions of fold further. Right on schedule for Moore's Law. If you plot computational power over the last hundred years, this is what you see. A constant growth through wars, recessions, good times and bad times. Pass forward now in 2023, six years from now, a thousand dollars can buy you the computational power of the human brain, 10 to the 16th cycles per second. Fast forward 25 years further, and now $1,000 of computational power buys you the power of the human race. Now our kids' homework gets really easy. And so this is what we're seeing. We're seeing faster, cheaper computers as the foundation, the bedrock, the growth medium upon which all these other technologies, sensors, networks, robotics, AR, VR, AI, all these technologies are growing and getting faster and better as computational power increases. And so what I teach at SU is that whatever becomes digitized enters a period of deceptive growth, dematerializes, demonetizes, and democratizes. What does that mean? This is what we're seeing, dematerialization. All of these things that we used to own now come for free on your cell phone. If you would, the son or daughter of a billionaire here in Manhattan on a smartphone, or the son or daughter of a poorest person in Kenya have access to the same free applications, have access to the same knowledge and information that Larry Page has as Alphabet. It's an incredible world. What we're seeing here is a dematerialization as all of these things become cheaper and cheaper, and ultimately a democratization where we have a billion handsets now in Africa. So as I think about this, this is what's changing the world today. This is the world's population. We are at seven and a half billion. And if you look at this, in 2010, we had 1.8 billion people connected on planet Earth. Today, the number is about three billion. But let's fast forward seven, eight years from now with what we'll hear from my, my friend Astro Teller, what we're seeing from Facebook, what we're seeing from 5G, from Qualcomm, what we're seeing from OneWeb, what we're seeing from SpaceX, is that we're about to connect the entire planet. So what do five billion new minds who've never been connected do? 
What problems are they going to solve? What are they going to create? What are they going to desire? What are they going to consume? And these are 5 billion people coming online, not like you and I did at 9600 baud. They're coming on at a megabit per second or better. They're coming on with the world's information on Google. They're coming on with the ability to spin up a thousand processor cores on Amazon Web. They're coming on with the power to change the world. So my first book, Abundance, talked about the notion that technology is the force that takes what used to be scarce and makes it abundant. So if I had in the back of my house an orange tree, if I go and I pluck the oranges from the lowest branches, they go from being abundant to being scarce until I invent a new piece of technology, for example, a ladder that gives me higher reach. And now all of a sudden, oranges are abundant again. This sort of simple way of viewing it is what's going on in the world. What will we think of as more scarce than perfect diamonds? But yet, there is a company not far from Singularity University or Google that has built a machine the size of a small refrigerator that in one end comes methane, water, and electricity, and out the other end comes perfect diamonds, taking what was scarce and making it abundant. We're living in a world in which we're about to create a world of abundant energy, right? We have 8,000 times more energy hitting the surface of the sun, uh, the surface of the earth, every year than we use as a species. So in 2016, we hit a mark where for the first time solar and wind was cheaper than fossil fuels in 30 countries. The global status report from last year shows us that 25% of the world's power is coming from renewables. Last month in Germany, a record was hit where 85% of electricity came from renewables. And look at this drastic improvement of the cost of installed solar photovoltaic, right? A 99% improvement from $76 per watt down to 36, uh, 36 cents per watt. And if you have abundant energy, you have abundant water, right? We live on a planet that is two-thirds covered with water. Yes, 97.5% is salt, 2% is ice, and we fight over half a percent. I'm proud to, to run the XPRIZE Foundation, and we run these large-scale global competitions. Out of India, funded by Ratan Tata, we have an Abundance Water XPRIZE, asking teams to build the technology to extract 2,000 liters of water per day from renewable energies out of the atmosphere, take it out of the humidity to give families across India clean drinking water at less than two cents per liter. Education is becoming abundant. I love the fact that we're living in a world that is becoming more and more literate over the last 200 years. Today at the XPRIZE, we have something called the Global Learning XPRIZE. It's a $15 million prize funded by Elon Musk that's asking teams to create an Android application that can take a child in the middle of no place and give them basic reading, writing, and numeracy on their own in 18 months. Google's given us 8,000 tablets. We had 700 teams enter this competition. We're narrowing it down to the top five, putting them on the tablets and distributing these in Tanzania and measuring the impact on the children, on the families, on the villages. And then finally, the winning technology will be open sourced. Imagine being able to create a billion educators per year as these devices go around the world. In the field of abundant healthcare, it's been incredible what's happened over the last couple hundred years. Look at this, childhood mortality rates dropping drastically at the same time that maternal mortality rates have dropped drastically. It used to be dangerous to have a child. I'm very proud that we've just awarded the $10 million Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. We challenged teams around the world to build a handheld mobile device that could diagnose 15 different diseases. $10 million put up by Qualcomm. And now these devices are going to be developed in the developed world and in what I call the world of the rising billion. So imagine one of these devices in a village, not for a doctor or for a nurse, but for anybody being able to help diagnose you. And when I think about where we're going in the form of abundance, 
the realization is that we are about to be on the verge of a revolution in transportation. So this is an image of Google's uh, Waymo spin-out from our dear friend Astro Teller, who's coming up next, uh, in partnership with Chrysler. Autonomous cars are going to effectively be five to ten times cheaper than owning a car. So imagine that the poorest people who can't afford a car all of a sudden are going to be chauffeured around. It's going to transform transportation. What about 3D printing? We're about to create a revolution in how we manufacture our homes. Take, can I have the sound up on this, please? Sound up, please. Let's try that again. Size house being 3D printed in 10 hours. Wow. Uh, and and the, the, the speed and performance and intricate design that can be achieved now just boggles the mind. And this is at least, Peter, a 10x improvement over what we saw just a year ago. So what you missed in the beginning, this is basically printing a full-size house in 10 hours out of Asia. So we're seeing a revolution in how we manufacture our housing. So we're living in a world, I believe, in which we're taking those things that used to be scarce, those things that we build the SDGs on, those things that matter to a mother and a father, access to food, energy, water, healthcare, education, democracy, information, and going from scarcity to abundance at a rate faster and faster. So why have these changes been happening? Why now? Ultimately, it's the impact of exponential technologies. So as we enter a world in which we have 8 billion people connected in the next five to six years, those are 8 billion entrepreneurs, 8 billion thinkers, 8 billion people with challenges and problems. You know, at both SU and at XPRIZE, we teach. You want to become a billionaire? Help a billion people. The world's biggest problems are the world's biggest business opportunities. We're living during an extraordinary time, a time where the number of people able to actually impact a problem is growing astronomically. A time for me where a child born today has the power to change the world that was only resident in governments and corporations just a few decades ago. An honor, a pleasure to be here. Thank you.